is a good con this year? Yeah. Yay. 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 I, I have a few more people than you, last year out in the halls. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, probably grew by about 10,000 people. What was the number? Year. Someone told me 70,000. Yeah, we, we, we actually won't know until probably a couple months after the con. Okay. Yeah, they uh, take some a while to figure out that because, of, you know, we have the at-the-door badges and things, so they usually never get around to giving those numbers until later on. I won't get any of that stuff for a while. Usually before the first director's meeting, which is January. So, so uh, uh, if you're here, you obviously know a read that's here because that means you care enough to have been here a few times, and I think most of these people have been on enough things. We have Barbara Drescher. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and then uh, next to her is uh, this guy who got shot in the face last night. <laughs> <laughs> Claim to fame. <laughs> and then Margaret Downey, who likes to make convince, convinces everybody to go and dress in really cool outfits in the blazing heat of Atlanta in the summer. I, I don't think I call them cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ben Radford, who tries to find ghosts. Among other things, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, Tim Farley, who tries to like do something new all the time. Yeah, we did the yeah we did the ignite talk. Anybody out there did was here for the ignite ignite sexist? Oh my! Ignite skepticism. Yeah, it's That's the end of the con. My brain don't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm planning next year six. Six of them. No. Last back year, back. One of, next year, one of the ideas that me and Swoopy thought about after we were doing our wrap-up conversation between us, I'm thinking about at least doing that the first day instead of the last day, like later on in the first day, because it gives people a good idea of like uh, some cool topics that you know kind of permeate through the uh, the rest of the uh, convention. Might I right. suggest something then? Yeah. Um, a lot of people have asked me exactly what are skeptics, what are skeptics, what is skepticism? Yeah, well, we've, I did 101 things on the first day for like the past like three years, and oh. this year I decided, well, I had enough content, I didn't want to fill up the con, the, yeah. the slot. So, uh, yeah, we could do that yeah. in Ignite format yeah. so that we yeah, could, we that'd be good. cover mm -hmm. it in a different way. Yeah. I still think someone should volunteer to do a skepticism trifold for DragonCon. Uh, Anybody trifold? out there? What do you like mean? A, trif a trifold of information. Oh, oh, yeah. oh like a brochure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's you not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> See? I what did I say? Turn in by, <laughs> turn in by I, June. I, you know what? what I, 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 you're, you're, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Margaret's very first talk. I don't suggest something unless I'm prepared to do that. Oh, <laughs> well, that's true. Good Maybe memory. Good memory. That. But I did say <laughs> I want to have someone volunteer to do a trifle. Didn't I just you say that? You did say that. You okay. prefaced that well. I did. I prefaced that. I was just double checking. You yeah, know, I've already so. been told to ask twice, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what, what's going remind on? me, Margaret. Thank I will. You. I will. Oh, that's it. good. So he, he's got a card. Yeah. What is skepticism? That's cool too. Right. Yeah, I like See? it. There you go. You tell me, beat it to it in card format. Just fold it in three seconds. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> origami there. things. There yeah. you go. <laughs> is there a question in the booth monitor there? Well, if you have a question, you go to the mic. If you're the, if you're back there, you have a microphone. <laughs> Corth, what are you doing? He's, he's throwing stuff at. What's what no. she doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> roll it. So we have, we have a microphone. So if anybody wants to say anything about the past, was it four? For me, it's like been five um, days. About, and uh, anybody has any cool stories about things they saw or things you want, want more of, or mm -hmm. guess that you think criticism and comments are all, uh, yeah. are all all welcome. Yeah. I love the skeptic track, but I'm not a scientician. So one of the things I really loved was the presentation on the Templars. Yeah. And I'd like to see more talk about pseudo history, whether it's in a lightning round or uh, a panel, uh, talk about historical methods, talk about myths, which 
are on the right and the left yeah. of the political spectrum that affect the way people think about um, think about the future, think about the present based on their misconceptions about the past. Funny thing is, my favorite thing this year, not overall because of what happened, Lana, you're talking about Lanka Dunham. Yeah. Um, she's been coming to DragonCon, I didn't know about her for, I guess, past like almost 10 years. And she's always been, well, before they redid it, it used, it used to be this the X-Track, which is like all the conspiracy theory mm -hmm. stuff. It's supposed to, originally that track's supposed to be about the TV shows, and they I w came back to that. So X-Track is now like Warehouse 13, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But anyway, she was always pigeonholed as being the historian on the panels where everybody believes the crap that she knows is untrue, so she always had to fight about it. Somebody finally last year said, have you heard about this person that drank kind of a year? I come all the time and I always see her on these panels and she's like really smart, knows all this stuff and nobody believes her because they're all against the, the reality. And so I was like, well, cool, we'll give her an email. Her email. So I did and she was so happy because she said she's been coming to the skeptic track after in between her other panels to sit in the back because she's, she, she's like, it's a, fresh air because she's surrounded by everybody saying I believe they're crazy stuff um, so I was great and her presentation is great she said she gave me a list of five or six things for her to talk about and I chose that one because I thought the uh, title would draw in some of the woo believers so they would come to the track but yeah so she had, she has a lot of other ones and she said she'll do any of them next year so bring her back great. yeah She's yeah. done that for cryptology yeah. stuff, but she also ends up in... She's over there right now yeah. doing quick Wikipedia Q&A. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when she's not there, she's always been yeah, tossed. Wikipedia, how to use Wikipedia. Yeah. It's a whole historical thing. Uh, so, I... You know, secondary sources are really better than primary sources, and people don't... You're not on a mic. You're not on a mic. Nobody's can hearing you. <laughs> Can you, yeah. if you got something to say, it's better to say it into the mic because they're recording stuff. So, but anyway, yeah. So I, I talked to her a little bit afterwards, and she said she'll definitely come back and do a, a talk or two next year. So that's great. Hi. Hello. My question is more of a general Dragon Con question than specifically to the skeptic track. Um, I've been coming to Dragon Con for the last five years. I love it. Every single year, the crowds have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. What is the current thinking on capping attendance here? Okay. Well, okay, nobody realizes this, but yes, we do actually have a ticket cap for Dragon Con. Haven't hit it yet. Um, and it's actually based on OSHA. I mean, it's just the number, number of tickets we can sell are the number of tickets that the hotels can feasibly hand, handle safely based on the city's Thing. I would debate that. If you had a fire in the Marriott Saturday afternoon, well, it's a safety hazard. Now, yeah. I mean. that's the thing that, that's, that's very difficult to do because no matter how many people are here, it, it's a very gentle balance where we, we try to, I know DragonCon itself tries to take the big thing, like if they know something's <laughs> big, like William Shatner is this in, in like the Sheridan, well then they try to find another just as big name and put it at the Hyatt. So those crowds have to choose, um, and they do that. The problem is you get the bird on a wire effect, where you the have a cr birds on a wire oh, effect, okay. where you have a crowd of people. It's like, where, where are they going? Well, they're going to go to Shatner. If I was going to go here, eh, I'll just go with these people. So now and then you get everybody going to one place, and then the other thing is a little bit less. So they try to do that every time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. What are you going to do? I mean, it's popular. What are you going to do? Um, and they, are, they, they have ways to try to figure out leaving some of it this uh, next year. They've had some talk on some ideas. I probably can't tell you what they are publicly. But no, yeah. but I'm, I'm glad to hear that there is some yeah. dialogue going on it because oh. it, it occurred not just to oh, yeah. me, but to many, many of my friends. This is a safety hazard. We saw people passing out. We saw, you know, the heat, the crowds. I've never seen crowds like this. Yeah. I live in New York. This is, this is yeah. like, you know, this is, yeah. this is crazy. And why, why do you think I, when they, I only had one large room event because I figure if everybody stays in one room, we don't have to like, because I was bad enough with lines and things, so. Right. Yeah. But yeah, there are, there are plans, just, you know, it's a big ship, 
and the city is a big ship too because we have to coordinate things with the city because we're so big. Um, and then hotels have contracts with their, so it's like if, well, we want some stuff at like the Ritz Carlton is right across from the Westin. Well, we've tried a couple of times, but you know, they have contracts with other conventions, like business conventions and things, and you can't kick them out, you know, they have a contract. Um, so a lot of times, like we, they want to do this, but they have to wait two day, two years, and people don't realize that, what are you going to do? Um, and they have some other ideas about maybe putting large room events at the America Mart because we can't do them late at night, but that's why we don't use it very much. But during the day, they can open up some of the larger rooms at the America Mart for big room events during the day. It's a possibility. It depends on the time of year because the America Mart is a weird beast. Well, so. I mean, it, it sounds like you're addressing the line situation for events and that's and that's great but if the hotels have to let in everybody with a badge or a room key or something it's still going to be too many people in too small a space that's that's just yeah. what I'm getting at well, well what you know. don't well, really realize though is the fire marshal actually take pays attention to that they 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 shut yeah. down these hotels before at Dragon if they get too full uh, yeah, it, I've seen it several about, before uh, they they just, they stopped yeah they, they actually yeah. shut down the so. hotel wasn't it about th I think it was 3 years ago 4 years yeah. ago that um, um, they were actually going to all of the track rooms. It was one year where they, you you couldn't put people on the floor, I and mean, it was very very strict. So there are years when yeah, they, they, they do. Pay I very was close frankly shocked the fire marshals were not coming in. Yeah, uh, I complained no, no, about well, the crowds actually, actually, too, but honestly, I don't, I don't think that anyone here, me, Derek's, you know, a track director, mm -hmm. it's not his his not decisions to make. Yeah, I mean, here's an example, right? This year, because of the crowds, they made it mandatory. People, if you notice, if you're at the track room here for a while, did you really notice that, like, yesterday and today, we had everybody have to leave mm -hmm. before they came back in? Well, they've been, uh, yeah. at least since rooms. I've been here, that's, yeah, that's, they that's, always that's, that's the a, room that's a, that's they a everybody thing. in. So. By the way, there is a cap on the parade participation. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, that I know. Otherwise, it would so. just go on all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? That so, I know. I uh, mean, oh, yeah. and again, that's outside. If there's, if there's an incident, if there's, you know, if people have to get, there's streets. There's, you know, it's, it's outside. Mm -hmm. um, I'm referring more to the, ho the crowds in the hotels, the crowds in the skywalks, mm -hmm. where if there's a problem, no one can even get to them. Um, so, and there's a lot of very flammable costumes in there, <laughs> and, you know? I think it would probably be wise to, to now I have, a ha have that discussion with the higher-ups. How much I weight can a Jesus, skywalk but, hold? Yeah. Oh, trust what? me, that, <laughs> no, we, we've, to do with we've that talked about that in the first director's meeting before they built that, and they actually worked with the city to make sure. They actually said, well, our thing was, it was funny when they talked about that, the first thing that, uh, What's his name? Um, the DragonCon TV guy, Brian Richardson. Mm -hmm. And he stood up, he's like, yeah, you realize that they have to make this thing be able to handle a marching group of about thousands of people in full plate mar mail armor, otherwise you can't make the thing work. <laughs> and they said, yeah, they're like, so they, yeah, they did actually work with them. And, and it, engineering is weird because when you look at something, you can't imagine it happening, but th those things are built pretty damn well. So Thank you. I, I would just add that, that if anything, I'm surprised that there aren't more problems, uh, mm -hmm. given, given how many people are here in such a tight amount of space with 60,000 more over these hotels, I mean, I I'm frankly shocked that there aren't you know people dropping dead every couple <laughs> every couple hours. Just so. with the numbers, it's just a numbers game. I mean, even if the, if you didn't, even if we weren't elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder is more like it in the sweltering heat. Um, even if that weren't true, just the sheer number of people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also these each of the hotels actually does staff police. You don't see them on purpose, cause otherwise it looks weird to people. But they actually do. I mean, I interact with them when I go down to the turn in my keys and things so there's more security than it seems to be oh yeah yeah and you know actually this year I who was it somebody actually came up to me I think the first day and they wanted to say well you know I know a group of people that would be happy to provide you security for uh, protecting women if they have issues with harassment and things it's like you don't realize we actually are, this year this is the first year, I think, officially, it, even though we've in the past I actually had a plan for it, that officially this year, they're in every hotel, they actually had uh, professionals to deal with that if it happened. 
they had actually police and also counselors in each hotel. They don't advertise that because why would you advertise the most horrid parts of anything? But it, it's there. So yeah, they, it's, it's like, like I said, you make it invisible on purpose. Like I, wor I work in the water or wastewater industry and I tell people all the time, one thing that we are reminded about no is when we do our job well, you don't even realize that somebody has to do that job. So you turn on your faucet and cook at night and you turn it off and you never think about the fact that there's a whole group of people who make that happen. Mm -hmm. And they have, there's a lot of work behind it. So that's the, and it's the same idea. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that you, you make invisible on purpose. That's true. Do we have a question? Oh, we do. Yeah. Hi, I just was going to say, um, thanks. It was a great, great con again, yet again. Um, so y'all have all been to other conventions. What, it, what need, what is done there that ha we haven't done here or we don't do enough of here? Um, what do y'all think? Well, I used to be a director at. Not you, Derek. Them. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, we heard nothing. Right, here's, I'm just giving you some ideas yeah, I've had. <laughs> it, yeah. So I used to be a, a director at Comdex back in the day when it was a hell of a lot bigger than this. Of course, that was in a convention center. This, conven this convention could never be in a convention center. Um, but they, the thing they did I, I thought was a lot better was the ticketing for the badges. Even though our new system was really, really good. It was so fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We yeah, but... Here. Have yeah, you ever been to actually ever been to a concert? Have I ever been? To yeah, of course. A, a big name concert. Like, you want to go see? You know? Yeah. yeah. Even faster, right? You let me just take it. You tear ticket people in. Let people through. I'll scan it. Yeah. I think yeah. that I honestly think if from everything I heard this year from everyone I know that went to pick one up over at the Sheraton, they finally figured it out. Oh yeah, yeah. They finally I'm figured it yeah. out. But yeah. So. I'm Oh yeah, I'll let the I'll let the rest of them talk about that. Go ahead. I'll start with you. With me? Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what to say. To me, that the questions it's an interesting question, but um, every con every convention that I go to is different, you know, um, and it has a different purpose and kind of a different um, a different audience, a different feel to it. You know, I go to professional cons and. Um, it's a little more like this, where there's something, something different going on. It you have to make choices, you know. And then there's cons where the main programming is all the same, and you're all in one room, and they're all great, but they are all very, very different. I love Dragon Con because it's not just about skepticism, and um, and I can do stuff on the science track, and I can talk about stuff that I wouldn't necessarily, you know, talk to skeptics wouldn't necessarily be interested in that are just science related. Um, but I also love being, I love being a participant as well. And I get to be a lot more of a participant at, at Dragon Con than I do at some other conventions. So that's what I like about it. Yeah. Dragon Con's my favorite as well. Um, I, I love the fact that, it, you know, when people talk to, oh wait, that's like the Comic Con in Atlanta, right? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's, um, I, I appreciate that you relate the two and there are some likenesses but it's completely different and it's difficult to explain because if you look at all the different tracks there's just so many different so it's a great opportunity to send somebody to the website but there's not another convention where where I would go and perform as well as panel hosts like just mm -hmm. right off the bat and that that happens occasionally but it's rare and um I enjoy being able to talk about things off stage and in the way it relates to life and my kids and so forth and stuff so uh, I wouldn't change anything, but I'm kind of biased because I've been coming for so long, and I feel like this is like, you know, my people, my home, you know, so. Um, but, yeah, that's me. So I would answer that and say that uh, Dragon Con, to me, is the ultimate model that might be a good thing for, um, say, the atheist community to adopt. Um, I've always pushed for a unity conference, and yes, the Reason Rally was close to that, but um, I'm in my head imagining where the humanists are in one hotel, the atheists are in another hotel, and the, you know, the... Uh, they call that schisms, don't they? How do, you <laughs> yeah, how do you do that when there's so much overlap? Exactly, I mean, but, but you, you know, just kind of get all of them together at one time. 
and and it just becomes huge and big like dragon con (laughs) but i know that's just a dream but it is a great model you know you've got a lot of wonderful volunteers uh there's nothing like it and when i try to explain how it runs with what um 90 percent volunteers it it just blows people away Uh, because it's a it's a machine it's a dragon con machine yeah, I don't really have that much to add other than sort of to pick up on what Mar- Margaret said, which is uh, in terms of the, the breadth of topics that are available here. It's just fascinating. There's stuff that I couldn't care less about. I, you know, <laughs> video okay. gaming. I haven't played a video game in 15 years. I, I'm sure it's great. That not, explains not, everything. I just, I just <laughs> there, there you go. But I just, you know, the, the you know, all the costume that's all great and it's fascinating as an outsider to say wow that's really cool you guys i don't want to spend more than a minute looking at it but this is everybody has their own gig and that's what i really like about dragon con is that uh you know like they were saying it's, it's it whatever you want it's here you want to talk about doctor who it's here you want to look at the skeptics and and i think that it really provides a good a good model for for uh for for cross-pollination uh for example uh, i gave a talk it was yesterday, whenever it was, on urban legends, kidney theft urban legends. And I had three people, or f- three or four people come up to me, yeah, they were in a group, and they said, you know, we, oh, I'd never heard of the Skeptics track. Uh, I just saw there's something on, on organ theft, and I'm like, this sounds interesting. So I came in, I heard your talk, I loved it, this is so cool. What do you guys do, you know, I wish I'd heard of you, your track four days ago. And so I said, yeah, yeah here's the stuff. Yeah. And so that's the great thing, is people just wandering off the street, they're, they're here to see William Shatner, and they're like, wow, what's, what's, what's this science thing? Uh, magician? That's, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and it, it, you just sort of this explosion yeah. of, of, of cross-pollinating interests. I think that's one thing that, that is often missing from smaller, skeptic-oriented ones. Uh, even like, even with like Tan, The Amazing Meeting, uh, you know, you, ha- you have big names. You have the, you know, the South Park guys, and you have Bill Nye and, and Neil Tyson, and all that's great. I mean, that's, those are, you, know, you need the, the big draw, but it's also cool to just sort of have you know, more diverse people who are you know, who are just you know here doing doing what they love. Are the people who walk in and like they come and on the question, Mike, like a couple of years ago, I remember the lady during the evolution talk, and she had a crisis of faith on the mic, right. and she almost cried yeah. because wow. she she got it by watching. The, I forget her name. She was really good. She did really de- she detailed why evolution is absolutely a fact, and this lady was. One, she actually said she came to figure out how she could use what she would learn to prove it even more that, you know, design made it work, not evolution. Mm-hmm. And she actually had, I gave her credit to get on the mic and actually say, I came here thinking I was going to figure out better ways to argue against you, and now I actually get it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she was starting to cry <laughs> on mic. Yeah. Yeah, it was really, I mean, I, that was the weirdest feeling for me. I was like, inside, I was like, yes! And then I was like, but then this other part of me was like, I felt so bad for her. Right. Because you could yeah. see it. It's darkest before the dawn. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, but that's what you're talking about, that she would have never even come to something like this, but it was right here. So she just walked in because she was over from the paranormal track. God sent her. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> clearly, clearly. I... I actually wrote a blog post a couple months ago that was, uh, in part, kind of to answer that same question. It was it was about uh, some of the events that I've observed, other events that aren't in the Dragon Con vein, but are more in the skeptic vein, um, and some of the experiments they were doing with how they were running their events. And I was just kind of drawing attention to, hey, look, this event is doing what this event is doing, and and stuff like that. And at the end of that post was where I talked about Ignite and Pecha Kucha. And that was what led to, I mentioned it to Derek, and he's like, yeah, we should do that at Skeptrack. And so we implemented one of the things that I thought would be a cool thing for an event to do. But the other cool thing that I mentioned in that is some, another thing that I've seen at tech conferences is, and it might not work too well at DragonCon, this would be more for the... Uh, 
familiar conference where you have meetings during the day and then food and drink at night where and you don't have programming running quite so late as you do you here mean, you mean the entire time yeah <laughs> um but what, what they do is, uh, and it, it's called different things sometimes, but generally it's called birds of a feather session. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea is, is that inevitably at meetings like this, yeah. one of the great things about it beyond what's going on up here is the fact that people get to meet who wouldn't have met otherwise and say, hey, we have an, a, a shared interest. Let's start organizing this thing. And then you find out that projects have gotten started because somebody had a conversation in the back corner there. And to facilitate that sort of thing, um, some people will have, you know, unofficial meetups. Let's meet in the Hilton restaurant at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Anyone who is interested in, uh, you know, doing uh, – language translation of skeptic videos. We'll all get together and we'll plan out how we're going to do that project or whatever. Just whatever the project is. The problem is is that if everybody's trying to do that themselves, it becomes a logistical nightmare of there's only so many restaurants and so much time <laughs> and how do you spread the publicity? People end up posting posters on the wall and the Hilton gets mad because they don't want things stuck on their wall and da 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 da. So the the solution to that is have a process, okay, so that you have the event, have a board where people can set these things up. And sometimes it's done ahead of time so that the convention can promote them for people. Sometimes it's done at registration, so it starts as you arrive at the event. But the idea is that the event itself is making an effort to publicize these things and say, oh, okay, we've got a new birds of a feather that's just been set up for tomorrow afternoon. And then sometimes they'll also um, allocate room space. So like if you're having meetings eight to five, uh, the rooms will be sitting idle in the evening because most people are in the bar or eating their dinner. You'll allocate some of those rooms and say, okay, you can block out a room for your language translation meetup or your handicapped access at skeptic conventions meetup or whatever your birds of a feather session is. And people do those signups and set those things up and get those new efforts and those new things uh, started um, in an easier way while everyone's in the same hotel together. So that's, that's another thing I would like to see more of is, is organized birds of a feather sessions at, at our events. Yeah, that we, is an excellent idea. It is. We, we actually, they tried it at TAM a, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I remember. It didn't work out, but I think it, part of it, it was how they tried it. They tried yeah, to do it you, during lunch. It, it needs to be organized. When a, it's a so buffet that, lunch. And, yeah. you know, and it, it just, it didn't make a lot of sense. I think there, there are be probably better ways to do it. Yeah probably should have tried it again, though, because yeah. I, I really love the idea. I've seen it at um, at uh, tech conferences where they people just have buttons right. with colors. And if you know like what the colors were, you go, oh, yeah, you like Java. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> or I li you like Coffee. data That's warehousing. Too, Let's get yeah. really geeky together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get a question? Yep. Next. So um, I wanted to say first I really enjoyed the skip track again this year. It's, thank uh, you. It's well, thank you. Especially Appreciate the it. weird things panel yesterday. That was great. <laughs> Bring those guys back for sure. But um, yeah. I, I noticed there was an unfortunate lack of George Trout the last two years. Uh, yeah. It's Trust always me. one of my favorite parts of Dragon Con. So it's one of his favorite things. It's one of his favorite things to do too. Um, what happened with George is uh, for a long time the Philly Funk Authority, when they since the be beginning of it, his this, group. Well, yeah, I forget the guy's name. Musical group. He, uh, yeah, he was, yeah. he's a drummer for Philly Funk Authority. Um, and uh, they are, uh, they had, since the beginning, they had this guy who organized all of their scheduling. Uh, that guy uh, now moved. And the new guy that came in is a very business-minded guy, more so than make money and still play music. Uh, because the new guy said, it's Labor Day. There's a lot of weddings on Labor Day. We're leaving money on the table. So they always, they keep booking things through all these days. And he's, last time, I, every time I talked to him, he's like, look, I'm really trying to get him to understand. Just make it so like two of the four days I can go to Dragon right. Con, maybe just for like, you know, the Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, or whatever. But yeah, that's what's going on. He can't, the band can't play without a drummer. So he's, he's important. 
So he can't just say, find somebody else, I'm on vacation. Yeah, yeah. Even July is pretty tough like the for other, weddings and stuff. Yeah, yeah, the other thing that's happening in the skeptic and atheist world is there are more and more events that yeah. people yeah. like George and, uh, you know, just name your favorite skeptic, secular, atheist, humanist, whatever speaker, uh, are getting pulled into. And in fact, there's an event this weekend in Pittsburgh, which is the State Atheist Humanist Convention for Pennsylvania. And I think George is uh, in amongst those weddings that he he's doing right this there. weekend. Yeah. He, can, he can run over and do that and then run back and do the wedding that he's doing on yeah. Sunday. So he's at that event. But that's happening more and more. I, I have been doing an online curation thing called the Skepticism Conventions Guide. And one of the things I just noticed on Tuesday is that I've been just keeping track of what's been going on in 2014. And I found over 100 events worldwide, when you count atheist, skeptic, humanist, free thought, uh, and these are events with multiple speakers, typically that run over a weekend, not just someone talking. Uh, and when you have 100 events and there's only 50, whatever, 52 weekends in a year, it means almost every weekend there's more than one event. Uh, some weekends, there's, there was a weekend this year where there were seven different events going on worldwide, just in the atheist, humanist, skeptic uh, world and so that that causes a lot of competition for people's times and speakers and things and causes a lot of conflicts and stuff which is one of the reasons I started doing this online curation thing so that people could notice the schedule and hopefully try to schedule their time better that's funny yeah, you. Uh, it's uh, it's called skepcon guide on Twitter uh, if you just uh, google skepticism convention guide uh, you'll find it. Okay. It's funny you say that because I remember back when, before we actually had the skeptic track, because of the, if anybody who's been coming to DragonCon for a while, me and Swoopy started being directors as the podcasting track. And the, from the very first year, I had <laughs> pretty much a heavy hitting lineup of skeptics, even though it was podcasting. Um, I had, you know, George Rabb and such, but I had to shuffle them to the science track. Um, but. Uh, Back in 2006, when we started that, I remember being thrilled when we, we found like, you know, 10 events worldwide. Yeah. yeah. Typically, you know, just a few years. And yeah, and if you look at this schedule of 100 events, most of them are first annual, second annual, yeah. third yeah. annual, fourth annual. They're all new. The, you know, there's a few things like the, human, you know, the American Humanist is the 74th year. annual and the yeah. American Ethical Union is about to have their 100th next year. But a lot of these events are really, really young events. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's amazing what's been happening. And I remember after we had the skeptic track that first started here, conventions like this never had one. And then I remember that first year had three or four people who are involved with other conventions. And they're like... Well, how did you get this going? And I told them, and which is a mistake to do because I just created like three of them <laughs> by telling them how to, you know, what I did to make it all happen. So now it's like a pretty common thing at these conventions like this now. Oh, you mean a skeptical yeah. track? Yeah, yeah, that's that's really taken off. There's yeah. nine worlds in London. Yeah. Uh, RavenCon is essentially starting to have a skeptic track. Mm -hmm. um, Balticon, Convergence. Is there um, any Comic Con? Huh? Is there, is there yeah, Comic Con has a different model. Well, yeah. right. No, no, I have yeah, an but, but I have an answer no, to that. No, but they have other stuff though. I have an answer to that though. Kinda. They don't really do tracks at Comic Con, right. but they do have. They they have started to integrate some skeptical type things. Like okay. Phil Plate has done a couple, oh. and he did a thing with uh, Kevin Grazier that he actually did here at DragonCon, and people at Comic Con saw it, and he did it there. Oh. Oh, that was a while back, like 2006 or seven. Um, but yeah, so but they, it's they, not a track. It's, it's not. A, not a, they don't have they tracks. Don't, they there. don't do that. They do a one giant an building, and they have events where they have three or four giant halls. Right. So all their stuff. It's no small room yeah. events. So, but we'll tell George that uh, that uh, he, that you missed him. So do we? Yeah, everybody else did. If I could just, I, I had one quick question though about um, panels that fill up. Now I know last year, especially, I I was a victim of that. And I know, like for example, Brian Brushwood did a panel. And I waited in line at least half an hour and wasn't even close to getting in. And uh, again, Kurt yesterday did a panel, and I, I heard an estimate that at least as many people oh, that did. showed up got turned away show. as got yeah. into the crystal yeah. ballroom. 
is there something, is there some kind of tracking that goes on for how many people get turned away, or is there something we can do to report that so that when yeah. similar panels happen in the future, the, we can get these people in a bigger room? That so app is good, and also send email to the feedback at dragoncon.org. I didn't see a way in the app. I didn't see a way in the app to say I tried to get in and it was full. Well, yeah. I think also you all the track directors know. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll put yeah. it. In. You can put a comment on the feedback thing. <laughs> there is a, a well, comments thing, and that when you rate it, you say rate it, and how many yeah. stars, and then you can make additional comments on the app. Yeah, that's really important. Rating things on the app is good. It gives feedback to the chairman about what's good. Um, I managed a lot of the lines this year. Um, for better or for worse. And the thing is, when we have things in larger rooms, they become the artifact of main programming. And so their security people kind of manage the line a little bit. Um, but every line, the amount of people that came in, the amount of people that were turned away, also the number of people that came in, it's all tracked. They actually have monitors that go around and they note um, percentage of room full and things like that. So they know, and that's how they give people either bigger rooms or smaller rooms, depending on what's needed. Um, so, and then in our post-con report, we report to them, you know, this was way oversold by, you know, 200% of people showed up and et cetera. And so the, the biggest problem this convention has from a programming standpoint right now is a shortage of large rooms. Um, we could have put everything in the crystal ballroom and then use some of the bigger rooms, but they're just not available because they need them for people like Patrick Stewart. Uh, yeah, I was actually surprised uh, a couple months after the convention last year, the first year we actually had the app with everything in it. Um, the, act, the app actually came out of this track. <laughs> we had we were the same app, we used to be just the skeptic track, and then I put, hooked up Pat Henry with the guy, that, well, core apps, which happened to be <laughs> Jeff Wag, if you remember. Oh, yeah. Jeff. yeah, he yeah. He, he worked for them. Uh, well, even before he worked there, another guy there happens to be a skeptic. Yeah, yeah. and he did it for and Tam. Was a Tam attendee. And then he did it for here for two or three years. And I finally got Pat Henry to look at it. It takes some time to look at it, and they went with it. Um, but the cool part about the app, when you rate everything, do that. Because we as directors, we get a, a, sp a spreadsheet with every. It's really cool. I was really happy. It's like it tells you the ratings and then all the comments. It has everything in there. It's like I was, I couldn't believe how many people actually did rate it. That's what got me. I thought maybe yeah, a couple hundred. Oh, gee, every single tra every single event had multiple comments and star ratings. It was, it was, it's it was worthwhile. It's very worthwhile. I'm going to duck out and head to the airport. Goodbye. But I want to say bye. Bye. thanks for everything, bye, bye. guys. See you next year. Good job. I know you are because you already booked your room. Yes. <laughs> and thank you for the um, pig outfit for the parade, the Pegasus. Oh, the pig was cool. Pegasus, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have a question? Yeah. I, I, this has probably been thought of, but I'm just going to throw this out. As a, as a method of pr crowd control, maybe we can stagger the sessions by a half an hour. Maybe not us, but some of the other tracks start at 1030. We start at 10, not just <gasps> us. That person put everybody into the hallway, into the walkways, into the snack bar, into the restaurants at the same time. You get a one half hour delay in some of the stuff. Uh, and I don't know, you know. Uh, I, I, I've talked with, uh, not Pat, I forget the person that did all the scheduling before. Anyway, he told me that they've tried all sorts of, I mean, this convention is now 27 years old. Yeah. Um, and uh, they've tried all sorts of ways. And it, doing what you did talking about it does create a small amount of better flow yeah but a, it's a huge increase of pe people being very mad oh <laughs> because when that happens then is that means nobody can then go to something else because everything's staggered so when they over. get out that thing's already going on so i missed it yeah well that's now, true so they but i'm it this saying way like you have enough i'm time saying like the board like the some of the people over there that almost would never show up maybe at any of the tracks here, they could be staggered. Because they still end up in the hallways when we do, yeah. when they're not even interested at all in coming here. I know. I, mean, right. I, I, I understand, right. you know. But remember, remember, ideally, at least ideally for me, is we would we would want people who yeah. Yeah. stumble in here <laughs> thinking they're looking for something else, they're like, hey, this is really and, cool. And I, I, I'll test it. Here's an example. Today, right, is the last day, right? So 
I have so much stuff to do on the last day where I have to move, I have to return things and mm. run around. It usually takes me forever. So this year I said, okay, I'm going to start doing some of that stuff while the panel's going on or an event is going on. So I got it all done in the time it took. Then I got back here in that last talk before the, this panel, I still had half of it left. And I, I walked all to the Hyatt, found somebody, talked to them, got to the, went to the Marriott, went to security, talked to them, went over to the Sheridan, talked to them, came back, and I still had 16, 17 minutes left. Um, now, if it was crowded, well, yeah. I think that 17 minutes would have been going through a crowd. But that's one of the reasons, one of the things is that you don't want to make it inconvenient for people to go things, you know, one end to the other, because that helps us this way. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of the paranormal people would never come over here if they yeah. knew they would have a chance that, you know, it would be over by the time they well, got there. And I, I remember when they arrived at the timing system that they use today, which is an hour of programming, half hour for people to walk around, an hour of programming. And actually where that originated was not so much the people need a half an hour to walk from here to the West End. It was because programming tracks never run on time. No, not too. And those half hour breaks give you a buffer so that if a if a track if a uh, if a piece of programming runs ten minutes late, it doesn't impact the next piece of programming at all. Because I, I can tell you from his from my own memory, I used to run the info desks and I was the guy who came up with the Daily Dragon way back in the ancient history. Wow. And that little, program, too, too. that little pocket program, I'm so proud that they still use the that exact... Him. That is That him. pocket program is the format I designed in 1996. Wow. And they still use it, basically the same exact layout. <laughs> It was funny. I remember distinctly remember having the conversation because they used to print a book about this big that had in giant letters on it, pocket program, and I <laughs> held it up, <laughs> and I said, who has a pocket this big? Why are we doing this? And we came up with that format. But um, And part of doing the Daily Dragon was this hair-pulling exercise of trying to tell people with signs and things, this room's running 32 minutes late, this room is running 47 minutes late, and it was just a nightmare, and that's where they arrived at the current system of hour on, half hour off, hour on, half hour off. Yeah, I've had many people come up to me and say, how can you make sure that DragonCon gets one of those countdown clocks for every single track room. <laughs> I looked at them and said, that's not Dragon Con. That's my guy. Yeah, yay <laughs> that's Mark, Mark Disler. Mark Disler. <laughs> Abrupt media. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's just like in the last panel. He goes, well, the, the time is out, so what do we do now? You said, you get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, said, he looked said, surprised, like, well, we're said, ending on yeah. time? What? It said done. I said, that means you're done. <laughs> Yep. So I, I have a... Uh, oh, look, it's course. Margaret Downey's husband. Hey, Tom! Hey. Tom! <laughs> Tom Downey, <laughs> a.k.a. Tom Scott Miller. So I have a uh, question or comment on uh, everybody, but Derek in particular. It seemed like the comedy session, well, wildly attended, overflow, probably a fire marshal issue. But uh, how did you see that? Did you see it as a success? We had a lot of people in that you didn't see in some of our other sessions. How do we make sure they come back from our other sessions? Same, same thing with the, uh, with the magic. We had a lot of folks in there. Uh, I, I know you don't want to um, you know, run a commercial before and after, but, but how do we make sure that those folks come back and see us during the rest of the, uh, the convention? I, I thought it was brilliant to have my show and then have me do a question and answer immediately after. I had people follow us over. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. you, you obviously, there's 1,100 people show up to the magic show. They're not all coming over here. We don't need them all. But if we got 10, 20, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I know Derek had to have thought that out ahead of time because that, oh, yeah. that's not a mistake. You know, that's not yeah. coincidence. And neither was the, ma the comedy show. That wasn't yeah. a mistake either. They did that on purpose because I... I had uh, actually that comedy show was three years in the making. It's it's 
was set up and canceled, set up, canceled, and this finally it actually happened. And it was because of, you know, getting all those guys that came was a pain. And this year they all were like, okay, we want to do it. And I was, I've been trying to get them. There, most people inside baseball, there's guests. Like, uh, Margaret's a guest. Uh, Kurt's a guest. But you are... Professional. A professional. Oh. Now... <laughs> There's not much difference for you at all, believe it or not. The difference is in the back end. So, as far as DragonCon's resources, professionals are easier. So, I was lobbying for the past like three years. Look, I want to have this comedy people, and they were like, well, yeah, but it's like, you know, six or seven people, which is like, uh, you know, the, they don't like to have too many professionals and guests because then there's. Cause, yeah, there's a cap on guests, and this all came about what, about five years ago now. I don't know. There's yeah. Like 400 in the whole yeah. If there's a few years in a row, they realized this trend where they had all these guests, and you go back in time, you look at the guest list, and it was like huge, and less than you know, 50 percent of them were actually on any programming, at all. Seriously. So that was like the last time it happened. It was like 40 or 50 percent of the actual guests were even on a panel. Wow. And that's when the board of directors said, we're cutting off. You now we have a th cap of 300. Four. And the, 400, is it 400 now? The 400. Yeah, yeah, actually the 400. And then... Uh, if it was the index in that pocket program, which I originally had to create out of a database, possibly got them to start noticing that because we put that in, there's an index in yeah. the back where you can look up a guest. And of course, now you got the app. Yeah. But in the old days, you didn't have apps, so it's like, where can I see, you know, Kurt? Uh, and you can look up his name and say, okay, he's going to do this on Friday and this on Saturday, and da 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 da. And you know, inevitably, there would be somebody who, uh, oh look, they're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then that one last, that year, about 2008 or something, it was relatively recently, but not like you know yesterday. But yeah, so they decided, we, the board of directors said, we can't just give people passes and just not do anything. Right. So they made a cap. But then, uh, after that first year, I was definitely one of the people who actually went directly to Pat Henry and said, we need something else because you, the, 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 the deadlines for what becomes a guest is, is really strict. But yet, people like Tim Farley, right. they shouldn't have to not come to the con, but yet... He, maybe he's not a guest, but he needs to be here. So they made professionals, which is just basically the, a guest with all the stuff that you don't give a crap about because you don't care. You know, it's like the, get, the professionals are basically all you get is a badge, nothing right. else. You don't get access to the green room. You don't get all the free benefits and all that stuff. So, Although, as you said, I think part of the question was how do we increase the, the attendance for that sort of thing. One idea that might work, or maybe this has been tried before, would be to have a flyer that, that lists everything on the track. Now, yes, that information is available as an, as an app in, a, on the, in the program, but why couldn't we just, you know, have somebody at the door handing out, just doesn't have anything complex, just a one-page thing that says, because if you're here for this, hey, if you, if you think Kurt's show is good, if you think Radford's show is good, here's the rest of it, because because people don't, I mean, yeah, of course, there's the there's a sign outside. Yeah. Why not just have oh, them, you, hand, hand them up? You, well, it's a matter of money. So you, you, yeah. you want How the, many flyers? Uh, you, 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 you want the meat space version of the Amazon. If you bought this, <laughs> you might be interested in going to this. Well, yeah, to, why, yeah. Just promote the whole track. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you it know, it'll cost you, you know, 50 bucks. We can have a It would be a good <laughs> feature for the app, though. One for be. every day. Actually, Once you star one event, the yeah. app should start that's suggesting a, that's a great other idea. <laughs> why, not, why not? Make, it's a lot of work for Swoopy and for Derek. And no, I have an idea to make out. that work, though. Oh. Now, you gave me an idea. Okay. Oh, good. Cool. We should. We can, can make. We can, we can make slides that run before and after the events for what's. Well, we do. Yes, but no. Make it relative to like what's coming Customize up next. Customize it more. Customize. Yeah, so it's not just you know what's next. Just what if you like this. Having it in your hand. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I like. Paper. I like the idea. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. <laughs> Even if you just limit it to um, something that's like the comedy show. Yeah. If you said, hey. Uh, you know, we've got thing at the back. If you like these guys, they're also going to do a panel at three o'clock on yeah. Saturday, and you can get a card at the back to, to show you what room and everything. And if you like that, 
Come see the weird things. Just a little, just a little cross promotion. I mean, you know. <laughs> question. Oh. I just want to make a comment. Um, I've been to conferences lots of different places, and everybody sitting up there is so approachable. And I think you guys did a really good job of being able to have not only the dialogue for the Q&A, but hanging around or you run into somebody in the hallway and they're very willing to have conversation. And I think that's very important for PR as well. Yeah. Well, I'll be very honest. I love that too. But even before I was doing this, it's kind of a thing about Dragon Con. They, they, they actually, they don't re-invite guests that aren't that way. Even if they're a huge name, they won't because of that. They want the guests. Not, here, it's a perfect re differential. You go to Comic-Con Comic is a perfect example. It's a convention you watch the people on stage, you'll never get to interact with them. And they don't like that here. They really want who, help, no matter how big the person is. If you saw Leonard Nimoy at one of the big panels, mm. you, you will see him walking to the elevator like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I saw it. In the years we've been yeah. here, yeah. Benita literally bumped into Ernest Borgnine. Yeah. I literally bumped into Alice Cooper. Yeah. I've <laughs> talked to Lou Ferrigno twice. <laughs> I he mean, it's just, me. and that's <laughs> did he? that's that's me too. Dragon, no. that Dragon Con. They do it on purpose, and I, I guess that that get a bad rap for not doing that. They don't re reinvite. Of, of all people, I once had a conversation with Timothy Leary. Yeah. At the <laughs> elevator here at Dragon Con, he was a guest one year, probably you know, 15 years ago. Why is that really happening? Yes, <laughs> I am really sure. That. Are you I, skeptical? I mean, for example, like Leonard Nimoy, as you brought up. A few years ago, about three years ago, he was here, and I actually had him on an event with Daniel Loxon and Ben mm -hmm. and, and uh, Nimoy, and it was going to be about, uh, the, what do you call it, In Search of. In Search of, yeah. It was yours. Ooh, swoopy. All right, so I put on the schedule. Get that on the record. Yeah, and, and, and it was her idea, and I was like, this is great. I put it on the Swoopy's schedule. Swoopy's idea. And I loved it, you know, Ben loved it. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll be on with Dan Leonard Nemo, it. absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and then twice. about two weeks before, well, a week or two before the deadline for the schedule, I went in the, pro the thing and it said, you have an alert. I looked at it. I was like, why did they get rid of it? So I called Pat. At that, time, at that time, Pat was still the chairman. And I said, what happened? He's like, Lemoy's people said he can't do that. He's fo he's focused on just Star Trek stuff. It's like you know the reason why I really, really wanted to do that. Swoopy read an article where he even said the the interview asked you while you go to these. Yes, exactly. The interview person asked him, "Well, you love going to the you always, you say you go to these conventions all the time. What do you love about them?" He said, "Yeah, is there anything you would?" love to do differently. He said, I would love it if one of these big conventions would have me come and talk about any one of the other thousand things I've ever done that everybody knows yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. He's an artist. He's an artist. Right. He's a photographer. Uh, he's a writer. Yeah. He, I mean, he produced in search of all these things, a lot of things that people know about but never think about. And so I thought he would love this. So it was weird to me that he got out of it. So I ran, he was staying in the Hilton at the time. So I ran into him in the early mornings. If anyone realizes it, if you are ever work on my staff, you know I get down here long before anybody else. And he was in the elevator with me. And I said, I wanted to say I was kind of disappointed that you couldn't make it to my In Search Of event that got canceled. He said, he looked at me and said, uh, what are you talking about? I said, I had you on a panel to talk about In Search Of with Ben Radford and, and Dana Loxian, and he said, really? I said, yeah. I said, Your people said that you couldn't do it. And he said, if I ever come back, put it back on the schedule, I'll make sure they make me do it, mm -hmm. because I would have loved to do that. Wow. Well, I have a quick story about Leonard Nimoy and Shatner. Um, as a guest, I was invited to a banquet, and um, of course, you have to pay for the banquet. But um, only, you know, a certain amount of people can get into this yeah. ballroom. So I went ahead and paid for it. And uh, I was sitting at a table basically right next to Le Leonard Nimoy and <laughs> William Shatner. And there was a bodyguard that said, no pictures, no pictures. Nobody could go up and get their picture taken with them. So I had the clever idea of saying, oh, take a picture of me 
and in the background was Leonard <laughs> Nimoy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you. Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm saying, okay, take a pic, but move sort of the camera a reverse that photo way, button. you know? <laughs> yeah, really, the photo and, bob in um, reverse. A bodyguard came up to me and he said, I'm going to confiscate your camera if you do that again. Uh, so really? I was busted. And that was the only time I ever got in trouble as a guest. You could, <laughs> you, you, I bet you could get away with it these days because everybody has a phone in their pocket, a, a f camera in their pocket. And they probably wouldn't even know it was a camera. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm just so scared to do anything <laughs> wrong. <laughs> was there a person who was trying to get up there and ask a question and they oh, gave up? Yeah. Go ahead. There's got, no dumb minutes. questions in skepticism. We, yeah, we got four minutes. Question everything, Angie. We got four minutes. <laughs> we got four minutes. Okay. All right, I don't know. I just did it. Look, my watch is pretty good. But, um, so you were talking about doing the panel. I, I, one of the things I really like is having the sign outside yeah. that has the list of what's coming up. Yeah, they do that out for us. My point is that if you had something like that in the back of the room, people could see as they're walking out what's coming up so they can say, oh, I need to mark that for tomorrow or whatever. Well, that's why we put on the screen. No, but it's, no. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But it no, flashes through so yeah, fast, yeah. and you can't look at the whole schedule at the same time. Right. Yeah. So, so one of the nice things, it's, it's just nice to have a thing that doesn't, like, rotate through. Right. And... Um, so, oh, and one other thing, Blue Ferrigno, um, I drove Randy in the parade a couple oh, of yeah, years that ago. Was weird. This is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I drove Randy in the parade a couple of years ago, and um, uh, the people in the car behind me, in my rearview mirror, so Randy's tiny, so he was sitting right behind me, I couldn't even see him, but in the rearview mirror <laughs> on both sides were Lou Ferrigno, number one, he's up and, and he'd fire those guns every so often, and the 300. <laughs> Boy, was it hard to concentrate on driving forward. Aunt Randy kept hitting me with his cane going, ice front, ice front. So, <laughs> so I went and I told Lou Ferrigno this and he, when the Walk of Fame was over here. And, um, and he laughed. And I said, do you know how hard it was to concentrate with you firing off those guns? <laughs> and uh, he and he laughed. So then I'm over here at the snack bar getting a drink or whatever. And some dude just, or some wall comes up and body checks me. It was Lou Ferrigno. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 Well, it's funny. So, well, also, the uh, well, at the after thing, after the parade, the same thing we did last time, um, the first time. This actually was the first time, wasn't it? No, yeah. no. Well, officially. Yeah, officially. Yeah. Unofficially, I kind of barraged you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, at that, that, that time, we had everybody up here, and James Randy's takeaway was that story, but, he's, <laughs> but he said... And the other thing I found really entertaining is I thought everybody in the parade hated me. Oh, right. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody was yelling for Lou, for Lou, Ringo, Lou but yeah. all he said was Lou. Yeah, so he, he kept thought everybody was saying boo. <laughs> and he I, thought, why is everybody booing <laughs> me? Boo, as I thought, why? Well, and, he kept asking us. He asked us a couple of times. Yeah. Are they saying, what are they saying? Are they saying boo? Are they booing me? Yeah, so I think, it was like, why am I being booed? <laughs> that's right, well, we that's right. Here, here, here. Yeah. yeah. Well, very quickly, um, before we get off the subject of the parade, I want to... Um, invite people who want to be in the parade to our Facebook page and to our Yahoo discussion group. If you'd like me to send you an invitation, uh, please come and fill out this form for me so that I can personally invite you to be a participant in the parade. And we had such a great turnout this year, and we were so proud to call ourselves skeptics. We introduced the skeptics in history, and we're talking about introducing even more uh, variety, including the possibility of a flow and music so um, we're gonna think we're gonna think big you, you're bold uh, we are I know we are skeptics <laughs> <And> we're proud <laughs> hey my co-director what does she have to say I thought I'd be good and be on mic I kept apparently I can't keep my mouth shut um I just wanted to weigh in real quick about the can we get this set for average height <laughs> remember, 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 you're as tall as I am. We're pull not average height. Grab that thing and pull it out. Oh, I can that's fix it. That's a very it's sensitive just, mic. You don't need to bend down. <laughs> James Randy would have to jump to talk. <laughs> in it. Yeah. You should have got a picture of James and Lou Frigno. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in any case, um, just a comment about the getting people in for the fun stuff and the important stuff. And I think we actually had a lot of really good examples, though, of stuff that wouldn't necessarily be considered, you know, as exciting as the comedy show or a magic show, where we had more than capacity things. Um, David we McCraney came this, this year. Um, he wrote, he was the author of You Are Not So Smart. Yeah. And he gave a pretty detailed talk, and that room was completely jam, jam, jam. It was jam and oh, and I, I probably, it was a 200% capacity. We turned that many people away. And people were like, who is this guy? I haven't heard of this guy. Where did all these people come from? I'm like, no, really, he's an author. And, and 
it was fantastic. So um, the other thing is that the, the stuff that he does is accessible. He's a really good, I think, science communicator. I mean, that's kind of what he's he doing a now. And and he's yeah, he's a podcaster for Boing Boing now. Yeah. So I mean, and Tim has been you know on his show. So. Um, but lots and lots of people came for that. So, you know, the, the thing is we want to do the fun stuff. And, you know, it's the same problem why, you know, everybody loves Mythbusters more than, you know, some other things. Because, you know, they blow stuff up too, but you're getting the science indiscriminately. And so I think we're going to keep trying to do a good mix of stuff. But I'm not terribly concerned about the attendance of the stuff that may not be as exciting. We did the, the climate change denier and um, yeah. panel with, you know, it was, that was a pretty intensive talk. It was a real talk. It wasn't, yeah. there wasn't any tap dancing or fun stuff or jokes, really. And <laughs> that was, that was again, a 200% attendance panel. The penguins so. are all going to die out. How I, cool is that? <laughs> no, it's not that. It's well, not it wasn't that funny. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, I, I really liked, I think Derek did a good job of arranging the mix of programming this year. Absolutely. And I, I think we're going to yeah, keep on what? being diverse. I think, I think what we've always wanted to do is do stuff that you're not going to see at those other 100 conventions. And I think mostly we do that. So. Uh, this year was... And it's because of the input of everybody who comes. So thank you for staying on a Monday and, and yeah, getting really. your input. And I was honestly very concerned this year because I think Ben might have been my, Ben and Margaret might have been my only two names that most people would have heard about. What? Yeah. yeah. As you, yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Kurt was in, new. In, in He's the, never in played the before. Yeah. Oh, in the community, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's uh, so, and and I've probably had more people here at the track this year than any other year. So I was very happy. Very, very pleased.